One of the coolest things happened right after the More You Know Pet Wellness Summit that the Nautical Dog hosted in Williamsburg, Virginia. So Rodney Habib and Dr. Karen Becker were the headliners, and they have a community called the Inside Scoop. And if you're not familiar familiar with that community, it's a membership-based community, very inexpensive, where they bring you all of the new and emerging science that they're finding out about. They bring guest speakers on. They have their own podcast. I believe it's just called Inside Scoop. And one of the things that they do in Inside Scoop um, is some Q&As sometimes, but they've never done a live Q&A before. And so they did that for the very first time after the Pet Wellness Summit at the Nautical Dog. And so the audience got to stay, ask questions live. They brought up a panel of a lot of the experts that were there, whether they were the speakers or they were attending the event, vendors, um, lots of people were on this panel. And you could ask anybody any question you wanted. It was really pretty cool. And one of the things that was asked of everybody on the panel was, um, what are three things, the top three things that you would like to see in every dog's bowl? And as that question was being asked, I started thinking, oh, what would my top three be? And it was interesting going down the list uh, or, you know, the line of all of the panelists, um, hearing what they had to say and how so many of them overlapped with what I had to say, <laughs> the three that I came up with in my mind as I was listening. And so I wanted to share those three with you. And I know it's been a while since I've done a solo episode. I, it's been a while since it's just been me and you. And I thought this was the perfect opportunity to do just that. And I will say it was really difficult to narrow it down to three because there are so many. And also it can be so individualized, right? One of the hardest parts of this exercise is thinking, what is the base diet of the animal, because that is going to make a huge difference into what I'm wanting to add to the bowl. So what I decided to do was just make an assumption that it's probably a kibble diet, because that's what the majority of people in the U.S. at least are feeding their pets still. Even those of us that are feeding fresh food we tend to forget some of these simpler things that we learned along the way. Maybe some of the things that we learned at the very beginning of our journey to fresh food feeding, because the basics still, they're the basics for a reason. So what are those three things that I decided, <laughs> in my opinion, are going to be some of the biggest game changers, regardless of what is already in the bowl? for your dog or cat. I decided that these are both great for dogs and cats. So I hope this has already got you thinking about what you're adding to the bowl. What would your top three things be if you're somebody who is active, you know, if, if you are a content creator or if you um, are a pet health coach, if you are helping people with their pets in any way, shape, or form, whether you're just adminning in a Facebook group and helping people, like whatever that looks like for you, however you're making a difference in the world, and believe me, you are, what are those top three things for you? That's something that I actually would really love to know. So wherever you spend most of your time, I spend most of my time on Instagram, but I do have a presence on other social medias. Reach out to me, comment on any of the reels that I post um, about this episode uh, or wherever you are and comment and let me know. Do you agree with my three things? Are there three different things that you think are maybe more important? I don't know. I think it's all very relative to the dog or cat in front of you. So I tried to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Conservative in what I think the average pet parent across the world is putting in their pet's bowl. 
And because of that, I think regardless of what is in your dog or cat's bowl right now, it could be the absolute best food in the whole wide world. These three things you still may want to think about. So let's get into it. Number one on my list, I cheated with this one just a little bit because I decided my number one thing, I don't care what else is in your pet's bowl, I want you to be adding hydration. Why do I want you to be adding hydration? So many of our pets live in a chronically dehydrated state. So, so many pets are chronically dehydrated and that does a number on the body. I mean, really our pets can't tell us how they feel, but imagine how you feel when you're dehydrated. You're, you just have this ick feeling, right? You maybe get headaches easier. Um, you're certainly your organ systems are not functioning at full capacity. Um, in fact, it takes so much water to digest food. I don't care what kind of food it is, but obviously it takes a whole heck of a lot more if we're di trying to digest a dry food diet or your dog or cat is trying to digest a dry food diet. They are literally going, their body, just to be able to digest that food or feed is going to be pulling all of the water from all of the organ systems just to try to digest that food. So imagine what is what that is doing to the health of our organ systems and why we are seeing so much chronic inflammatory issues in our pets. I mean, there are so many reasons, uh, but hydration is one of them. So when I think about hydration, um, my number one tippy top I wish everyone would do this. I wish everyone had access to this. And maybe you do. There are some really great companies that are trying to make this accessible to everyone. And that is going to be raw goat's milk. So raw goat's milk is a reproductive food. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about, uh, reproductive foods, because they can literally provide us or our pets with pretty much everything we need to sustain life. And not only to sustain life, but very possibly to thrive. That's what they're designed to do. That's how Mother Nature intended, right? When we think about raw goat's milk or even raw cow's milk, it's there. Any milk, right, that is produced by a mammal is designed to grow a child outside of the body. What better food? on the planet could there be we don't even know every nutrient profile that exists in raw milk it's we're constantly learning more about it not only that it is my favorite probiotic <laughs> everybody asks about probiotics probiotics are oh my goodness like a hot issue right now like everybody is talking about probiotics and we you know these things are cyclical right this thing this cool new thing is is really hot and trendy for four or five years and then we move on to some something else that is new hot and trendy and probiotics are very 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 important but they're not my first line of defense for anything that said especially if we're talking about something powdered that you know we're sprinkling on top of their food Certainly not my first line of defense for anything. That said, for the vast majority, with very little exception, raw goat's milk is going to be absolutely exceptional for any dog or cat. Again, never say never. There are always exceptions to the rule. We have to talk in generalities when we're talking to such a large audience, right? Like <clears throat> we can get into the nitty gritty and the weeds and that's what I constantly get comments on on social media is but this but that but this but that yeah i get it i'm speaking in generalities because that's how we have to speak to large audiences in general <laughs> raw goat's milk is going to be absolutely amazing for pretty much any dog or cat the probiotics the enzymes the natural enzymes that are going to aid in digestion that we're getting from raw goat's milk are like chef's kiss perfect better than anything else I could put in my dog or cat's body, right? Very nutrient rent, uh, rich, very, very nutrient. The vitamins and minerals, as I was saying, electrolytes, um, 
the medium chain fatty acids that we are finding in in raw milk. The only other food that you know we really talk to some high degree about how beneficial medium chain um, uh, fatty acids are are going to be in like coconuts. So when we think of raw goat's milk, I think of nature's perfect food. So that is why I say raw goat's milk. However, and I told you, I kind of cheated here because under this umbrella of hydration, I've got raw goat's milk. I've also got bone broth. And then we'll talk a little bit about filtered water. But bone broth, whether or not you're able to do raw goat's milk, I'm going to say, and if it's at all possible, let's also do bone broth. So yes, again, there are exceptions. Uh, Mast cell tumors, absolutely not. We do not want to feed additional histamines if we don't have to. There are reasons why we may not want to feed bone broth to every single animal. However, in general, bone broth is absolutely amazing. We've got not only the hydration aspect, which by the way, um, I don't just want you to put a bowl of water down for your dog and say I'm hydrating them. That's not how this works. There are cofactors and co-nutrients involved in feeding a fresh food diet that allow your pet's body when we are hydrating the food or we are feeding a food that is already hydrated and adding hydration to it, that the body can utilize and break down all of those nutrients so much better because that is how nature intended that food to be eaten. So it's not just about putting a bowl of water down or giving them some bone broth. It is about incorporating these things in mealtime. That is where you're going to see the biggest difference. So with bone broth, of course, we have the hydrating properties. We have all of the cofactors and co-nutrients that we're getting in addition to the hydration, the the water aspect of bone broth. We're getting all of those beautiful nutrients that are being pulled from the bones during the process of making bone broth. All of the collagen and gelatin. Uh, We're supporting joint health. We are um, alleviating, we can potentially alleviate a lot of the symptoms of joint pain, arthritis, inflammation throughout the body, um, glucosamine and chondroitin, digestive health. Oh my goodness, digestive health can be dramatically improved just by adding bone broth. Why? Because it coats the digestive tract. We're not just feeding or giving water, right? Which is hydrating, potentially. We'll talk about that in a second. But (laughs) bone broth is very easy to digest. It can actually settle the stomach. Um, It the gelatin we were just talking about can actually support and help aid in repairing the lining of the gut naturally. Um, so again, we're, th- there are so many nutritional benefits to bone broth in addition to all of these other things that we may not think about, like gut health, like joint health. So so very many th- things. And then if we can't do any of that, at the very, very least, I would absolutely love you adding filtered water to your pet's bowl. I don't care what it is you're feeding. I don't care what that base diet is. Adding filtered water, preferably remineralized filtered water because most of the water we drink these days is dead. Um, And so it is so much more hydrating if we're actually drinking living water. So adding those trace minerals back to the water helps us get back to a little bit more natural state. Obviously, it's still not natural. It's still not the way Mother Nature intended. That's just the world we live in. We live in a very toxic world. We have destroyed so many of our natural resources. And so we have to do the best we can. Remineralized filtered water. Please add it. I did get a comment the other day that somebody said that they do feed kibble and they have tried so many times to add water to the kibble and their pet will not eat it. I think it was a dog. Will not eat it. 
And I have two thoughts about that. One is it could be a textural issue, right? Um, and if it is a textural issue, then we can kind of rehydrate some kibble and then maybe add a little bit on top, try to get them back to a state where we can maybe over time decrease that that crunchy factor, provide them that crunchiness factor in other ways um, with fresh fruits and vegetables, that kind of thing. But the number one thing that my mind went to, because obviously texture is an issue, texture is generally more of an issue for cats than dogs. But the number one thing my mind went to was, yeah, we're diluting the palatants. We're diluting the palatants. And so when those palatants are diluted, it's no longer appetizing to your dog. How interesting is that, right? It is a food that they should not be eating and their body knows they should not be eating it because it's not food. It's actually feed. And it's really generally speaking, not hundred percent, but all of, but generally speaking, really, really poor quality ingredients, really, really not great. And certainly not a lot of bioavailable nutrients, um, a lot of synthetic vitamins and minerals added because we've completely denatured whatever quality of product we started with in, in creating that kibble. We've talked about that a lot. I don't, <clears throat> I don't need to necessarily go back into detail and in how kibble is made, but that was my first thought was, hmm, we have considerably diluted, uh, diluted those, those palatants and now your dog doesn't want it anymore. How interesting is that? So, um, yeah, there's, there's just so much, like, there's so much to be said about listening to your pet, about listening to your dog, about listening to your cat. And I realize that when us humans say, listen, we tend to think like, aud like audibly listen, but we have to pay attention to their body language. We have to pay attention to the changes in their mood, their behavior, their routines. And if they would normally eat something and then they're not eating it, hmm, what's changed? What's different? Maybe this isn't working for them anymore. So side note there, I got a little sidetracked. That's how I do. Anyway, so yes, I cheated a little bit and I gave you like a three for one under the umbrella of hydration, but that was my number one thing is hydration. So number two on my list, um, and we're, I'm kind of going back to another reproductive food is number two on my list is eggs. Eggs, I don't care if they're chicken eggs or quail eggs or duck eggs. Um, obviously, for the majority of us, we're going to be primarily feeding chicken eggs. Um, and as long as your pet can tolerate chicken, real, what's something that's really, really interesting about food intolerances is that they generally are created while, not always, generally. I'm going to just continue to say this because I feel like we have to hear it constantly speaking in generalities. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of food sensitivities are created while pets are eating kibble. So they are eating so denatured like that, that protein DNA structure is so denatured. It is destroyed. It is destroyed. And so and the the quality the quality is subpar at best um and so even if we have a dog who has developed a chicken sensitivity a chicken intolerance um probably because of the kibble they were eating sometimes not all the time but sometimes when we feed them maybe not necessarily chicken meat but if we feed them something adjacent, like the chicken egg, um, they're not necessarily sensitive to it. So it's worth a try, uh, I believe. I mean, work with your holistic vet, um, your nutritionist, your pet health coach. Work with somebody if you're concerned at all. But I think it's worth a try um, to, to give them eggs. And here is why. Again, we're talking about a reproductive food. And I think while we do know a lot more about eggs, scientifically speaking, than we do raw milk, I, I do still think that we don't quite understand the vastness of the benefits and the nutrient profile of 
eggs because again, they are a reproductive food. Um, preferably we're going to be feeding pastured, you know, um, eggs from pasture raised chickens that are not fed soy and grain. Like, well, chickens eat a lot of things. Let them eat natural. I like if we can get regeneratively raised (laughs) chickens, that would be fabulous, but I don't want them feeding. I don't want them eating soy and corn. I don't want them. Um, those aren't things that they would normally eat or, you know, we include those in the food chain because they're cheap filler. Um, but it can alter the nutrient profile. Like if that's, if, if you can't find that still any egg is better than no egg, I think, but Eggs are not only an incredible source of protein, high quality protein, generally speaking. And when we think of high quality protein, we're thinking of muscle development. We're thinking of repairing the body. We're thinking of, um, they are, they are really, really abundant in amino acids. So when we think of proteins, like there are all these different amino acids, some of which our bodies can make, some of which, um, speaking of our dogs and cats, they cannot make. They Essential amino acids are, are something that um, uh, amino acid profiles that our dogs and cats have to get from their food supply. So we're looking at such a nutrient-dense food, like so many, many vital nutrients. Like if If your dog lived on raw milk and eggs, I would be willing to bet you they would live a very long, healthy life. Just because these are so, I mean, these are, again, these are reproductive foods. They are so nutrient dense. They are designed to build strong, healthy bodies. So um, thinking of eggs, they are loaded with things like vitamins A, vitamin D, vitamin E, B12. Like that is so essential um, for all of us. And I bet we are all all very, very deficient in um, vitamins D and vitamins B12. Uh, riboflavin, they, it support, it's going to support your immune, immune bleh, I can't speak, immune function, bone health, energy. Um, We've got minerals like iron, selenium, and zinc. Like there is so much benefit to eating an egg. And I don't even care how you, I don't, I don't care how you feed it. They're also very easy to to digest again, because they're reproductive foods. That's how they are designed. So um, I don't even care how you feed it. You can feed it raw. I will say if you feed it raw, um, be careful. I would only feed the egg white a few times a week. Um, and feed the egg yolk up to every day. I, I truly, I know some people think that that's too much. I don't think that is too much. I eat eggs every single day. Why can't my dog eat eggs every single day? Um, I would just limit the raw egg white because of the avidin um, that can kind of bind to some of our um, preventing some vitamin B absorption. But still, even so, that's not going to be as big of a concern as not feeding eggs, in my opinion. Um, but you can feed them soft boiled. You can feed them scrambled. You can feed them poached. You can feed them however you want because eggs are absolutely incredible. You're not going to significantly change the nutrient quality regardless of how you cook it. I would say like probably don't fry them, right? Like that's, I don't know. I don't I, I don't even hate the idea of frying the egg as long as you're frying it in butter or tallow. I don't even hate that idea. If you're frying it in seed oils, please don't do that um, for you or for your pets. Uh, But feed the eggs. Feed the eggs, people, please. Um, For our cats, same. Same deal. I'm telling you, I will give my cats an egg yolk, a raw egg yolk, and they freaking love it. Give it a try. All right. Uh, where are we at? That was one hydration, even though it was really, really long. Hydration was actually one. Um, eggs, number two. What's my number three? Well, my number three is going to be small fish. 
Yeah, I really vacillated over what I was going to put in my number three position. But again, I went back to if I'm thinking across the board, it doesn't matter what else is in the bowl. I need to be adding small fish. And there are a lot of reasons that we should be adding small fish. And when I say that, I'm thinking like sardines, mackerel, anchovy, those kinds of small fish, Um, preferably small fish because they have less of a um, heavy metal load than larger fish do. Again, as humans, we're destroying the planet. We are polluting the waters. Um, Larger fish just have a heavier toxic load. So we want to feed smaller fish. One of the, even though fish have a lot of benefit to feed our pets, um, even if we think that maybe, okay, they may not be part of an ancestral diet. They may not be part of, you know, what a wolf grew up a thousand years ago eating. If we think of how we have depleted our soils, of how um, our foods are not as nutrient dense today as they were even a hundred years ago, we need to make up a lot of nutrient loss in what we've done to the planet. And fish help us do that. Um, one of the number one ways they help us do that is with vitamin D. And I say that because if you ask any veterinarian, especially a holistic or integrative veterinarian, they're going to tell you that pretty much every pet that passes through their door that they are allowed to test vitamin D on, meaning like they're asking for this vitamin D test and the pet parent is willing to pay for it. Um, they're going to tell you that every pet they test is deficient in vitamin D. So unlike humans, so us humans, we can get vitamin D from our food, but we can also, we can also, um, uh, take the UV rays from the sun that hit our skin and we can transfer that into vitamin D in our bodies. Interestingly, um, if I remember correctly, fact check me on this, dogs could do that too but their fur prevents them from being able to do that. So their fur blocks the UV rays and they're actually not able to do that because of their fur. So dogs and cats, because they're not able to, to, um, trans, what is the word? I want to say like transmute. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, UV rays from the sun into vitamin D in the body. They can only get it. Oh, I don't know where that British accent just came from. They can only get it from their food. And so when we're feeding food that doesn't have all the right nutrients in it, or we're feeding food that is all synthetic vitamins and minerals and the body has no idea what to do with it because it's synthetic, um, guess what? They are deficient in a lot. And vitamin D is one of those. And vitamin D is one that more and more veterinarians are looking at because it is so crucial to immune health. I don't know why my voice changes when I'm like, I'm trying to emphasize something. (laughs) Anyway, that's just me. I'm weird. So small fish. The number one thing people think of when they think of feeding fish is the benefits of omega-3s. Yes, that is also an incredible benefit of feeding uh, any fish, especially small, small fish, because generally speaking, especially if we're feeding a kibble diet, the omega-6 ratio in that food is through the freaking roof because AFCO allows it to be. We want, we would prefer like a one, God, wouldn't I love a one-to-one, but anywhere from like a one-to-two to a one-to-eight would be really amazing, omega-3 to omega-6. We don't get that in most foods. So we have to add in omega-3s to bring that ratio back down to where we want it to be. And fish, especially small oily fish, are a really great way to do that. Again, decrease, decreasing inflammation throughout the body. Fish are also a really high quality protein source, um, packed with vitamins and minerals. I was just saying vitamin D, also some B vitamins, calcium, because we're going to feed the bones in these small fish, um, calcium and phosphorus, because we're feeding the bones, we're feeding the bones with all the meat attached to them. So we're getting that calcium phosphorus, uh, a good calcium phosphorus ratio there. Um, smaller fish again are lowering contaminants, heart health, 
anti-inflammatory properties. Um, fish, generally speaking, are very palatable to animals. So yeah, those are the three things that I want you to be adding into your pet's bowl. Hydration, meaning raw goat's milk, even raw cow's milk, if you have easier access to that, bone broth, remineralized filtered water, all of that under hydration, number one. Two, eggs. Please be adding eggs. Please be adding eggs. I love me some eggs. Small, oily fish, number three. Let's get those vitamins and minerals balanced back out in the diet with small, oily fish. So those are my top three things. I'm very interested to know if your top three things are different for my top three things. Let me know. Um, reach out to me on your favorite social media. Instagram is mine. And I would love to hear from you. So with that, this ends my solo episode for the week. We'll be back next week with another, I don't know what we're going to do next week. <laughs> this summer is crazy for me, you guys. I'm traveling a lot. My niece is here visiting. My mom is getting ready to come visit. What is a girl to do when you need to have a podcast episode up every week? I don't know. I don't know. I might go back into the archives and find something really cool that I want to reiterate for you. I might take one of the, I don't know how many recordings that I still have to edit for you and put those up. I might do another solo episode. I don't know. I have no idea what next week is going to bring. Let me know what you want to hear and we'll see if it makes the cut. I don't know. Anyway, Instagram is the, my favorite place to, to connect with you, but I will be on TikTok. I will be on Facebook. Um, if you send me a message through my website, I will respond to you. All of the things. If you're interested in becoming a pet health coach, ask me about that too. I think I'm a little tired now, so I'm going to end this episode. You guys have a fabulous, fabulous week ahead. And I hope to see you on social media, on Instagram. Um, if you're not already following the podcast, please give us a follow. If you haven't rated it, on your favorite podcast app. I would be so, so thrilled if you did. You have no idea how much ratings help for people like me who do it all myself um, and how much I want to hear from you because I literally do it all myself. I don't care if it's a reel, a podcast, a YouTube video, any edit, a clip, it, it does it, a response to your comment. It is all me. So your kind words <laughs> and your reviews are so appreciated. With that, um, I'm just going to end. I'm just going to end. I will talk to you next week. Please give your pets some extra love from me. Bye, guys.